Are you struggling to figure out what units to unlock first in Conqueror's Blade, and you don't want to waste those precious unit XP tokens on maxing out the wrong units? Well, I've got you covered. In this video, I'm going to go over exactly what units you should unlock first in Conqueror's Blade and why, in order to have the most well-rounded warband possible. To kick things off, I'm going to be categorizing these units into three different categories. The first category are your evergreen units. These are units that have been good since the game's release, and they've been pretty good throughout almost all the seasons, so I wouldn't expect any meta shifts or new units to change that, and these are going to be a pretty safe pick no matter what season or meta we're currently in. The second category of units are our quest units. These are units you want specifically for certain types of quests or weekly rewards, things like bandit raids or resource gathering. And the third and last category is our current meta units. These are units that are currently very good in the current meta, but they do not have a long history of being meta units, so you do run the risk of these being nerfed and then them not being very viable, and then you're left sinking all your time into a unit that's not very good anymore. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and cover our first category, our evergreen units. And the first evergreen unit I want to cover has been a long-standing meta-defining unit known as the Imperial Pike Guards. These units have been good for a very long time, primarily due to one reason, their walk ability. Their walk ability is not only very damaging, but it also knocks down a large blob of enemy units, so this can be used very well in either an offensive or defensive teamfight to quickly shift the momentum back in your favor. One common theme you'll see with all of these evergreen units is they generally all have remained in the meta for so long because they are very good at changing the momentum of the game, and that is something that's not affected by a slight nerf or buff. Any unit that can do that effectively will be good in the meta, as Conqueror's Blade is a game of momentum at the end of the day. If you want to understand more about why that is or what I'm talking about, check out this video linked above or in the description of this video below. Our next unit is another classic known for its ability to hold down key areas of the map and soak up a lot of damage with their huge shields. These are of course the Imperial Spear Guards. These units fulfill a very important role on your team and can be the key differentiator in whether you win or lose. On the attacking side, if you have these units you are generally setting the timeline of when your team is pushing as they will be hiding behind you while you soak up any ranged projectiles from the front. On defense, they are very useful for protecting your team's high DPS units, especially when defending choke points like gatehouses. They may not be the most exciting unit to play, but your team will definitely thank you for bringing these guys. And with the new Season 20 systems, you'll also be able to rank MVP for tanking damage with these guys, so you won't be sacrificing your rating and sieges by bringing these guys any longer. Our next unit is the Imperial Spear Guard's best friend. We have our pole arm or long pike units. In particular, I'm including Fort Abrasios and Halberdier Sergeants under this category. These units are essentially a high DPS unit that can deal a lot of damage to units in front of them or around them, but they can be taken down rather quickly at range or if unprotected in melee combat. That's why if you combine these guys with a unit of Imperial Spear Guards, you'll have a very tanky blob of units that's also putting out an incredible amount of damage. It is one of the most basic and widely used pairings in the game. So find yourself a buddy, convince them to bring the Imperial Spear Guard while you rack up the unit kills with one of these units. Next up we have our Winged Hussars. These are everyone's favorite golden cav, and they excel at charging through big blobs of enemies. You could potentially talk about also including other golden cav in this category, but winged hustlers have really been a meta unit as far as I can remember, and I don't expect that to change anytime soon either, which I can't say for a lot of the other cav. They're just an overall really solid unit, and their charge is just always devastating because of how long their lance is. They can trade effectively even with anti-cav like IPG walks because of their ability to deal massive damage to unit formations before taking damage themselves. So those four units, especially Imperial Pike Guards, aka IPGs, Imperial Spear Guards, aka ISGs, a long pike unit, and Hussars would really be the units I recommend to unlock and max out as soon as possible. You can be pretty confident these are going to be pretty good units no matter what meta we're in. I do have some more Evergreen units I would recommend getting, but these are going to be more niche units. I think these will generally be good just because they fulfill a specific role that other units don't, but I wouldn't recommend going for them first unless you just want to have fun because they aren't going to be good in all scenarios. So one type of niche evergreen units are what I call blob unit killers. These units are able to kill or halt a large group of enemy units very quickly. So again, these are going to be relevant in pretty much any meta just because they are able to fulfill a role of being able to change the momentum of the game very quickly. And these are going to be units like Falcon 80 Gunners, Flamers, Zikalian Militia, and Shinji Grenadiers. I'll also give an honorable mention here to the Falcon 80 Gunners, as they also fulfill the niche of being the longest range unit in the game, and the only unit capable of destroying siege towers and artillery for things like territory wars. Our other type of niche Evergreen units are going to be our anti-cav units. These are good just because Golden Cav are generally so strong and dominate territory wars and sieges, so having a few of these units can be critical to not having your team get steamrolled by cav charges. 
In particular, Modows and Camels are some of the strongest anti-cap in the game currently to fulfill this role. So that wraps up all of our evergreen units. And remember, you're going to want to unlock this first as they're going to be good in pretty much any meta that we're going to run into. Our next category of units are what I call questing units. These are units that you're going to want on hand for various different weekly rewards or quests throughout the game systems. So that includes things like bandit raids and resource gathering. As far as bandit raids go, of course, you're going to want to be doing your five bandit raids per week to max out your unit XP. And to do those efficiently, you're going to want at least one fast cav unit. So right now, the best units for bandit raids are either the new Huanhuia heavy cav that came with the latest season or the Kriegs brooders, which came from the season before that. But really, any fast cav unit that deals a lot of damage and can survive will be pretty good at bandit raids. As for resource gathering, you're going to want a warband full of serfs with the resource gathering upgrades so that you can efficiently collect resources from the open world. So for our third and last category of units, we have our current meta units. These are units that are very good in the current meta, but I would say they are at risk of being nerfed at any given time, and that's why they don't fall under the evergreen categorization, and I'll explain why shortly. To start off with, of course we have our current seasonal units, so here I'm just grouping up any units that are part of the current season. The developers generally have these units be very strong in the current season to show them off as well as obviously try to get people to unlock them faster. It really depends on the season and how good the current season units actually are. If you want to know how good these season 20 units are, stay tuned as I'll be making unit overviews for each of the seasonal units once they come out. But generally, seasonal units are going to be very strong in their current season, and depending on how annoyed people get with them, it's very possible that they'll get nerfed into irrelevance after the current season is over. Aside from the current seasonal units, I know a lot of people might disagree with me on this, but I'm actually going to be grouping men at arms under this category, as they've been pretty strong for a while now and a lot of people get annoyed by them, so I wouldn't be surprised if they do get a slight nerf. I also think men at arms in general are starting to fall out of favor in the meta with units like Queen's Knights and Wu Wei Mansion Guards showing up more, and I'd expect that will remain the case with the introduction of the new tier 5 phalanx units in season 20 if they can trade effectively with men at arms as well. I'm not going to go over them, but I would also group Shield Maidens with Men at Arms in this regard for similar reasons. Next up we have the Wu Wei Mansion Guards. These guys were very dominant in the previous season, but I believe they have already received a slight tweak that made them a little bit worse, and I wouldn't be surprised if they got nerfed even a little bit more just given how dominant they were last season. Similarly, in this vein, I would also include the Huanhuia Heavy Cav for a very similar reason, as they were absolutely oppressive in the last season, and I think most people want to see these guys get nerfed, so I imagine they will definitely receive a nerf it was just a question of how big the nerf is going to be. After that, I would put Rattan Marksman. These guys are really the only blue tier unit that gets brought seriously into high level sieges and territory wars, even in Golden Era. They are very strong currently, but I think any slight nerf to either certain doctrines they use, leadership, or poison damage could very quickly move these guys back into being irrelevant as they were for a long time before their mastery. I don't know that's very likely to happen, but I wouldn't be surprised as a fair amount of players do complain about them. Next up, we have the Yanyada Cavalry. These units have swaps back and forth between being absolutely oppressive and being completely useless. I think it's just hard to balance the unit with how the unit is currently designed. I would say they're very good currently, and a lot of people do complain about their CC immunity, which allows them to wipe enemy blobs very easily without much counterplay. So I do think there's a decent chance these guys do get nerfed in the future, given how many people complain about them, and in general about CC immunity abilities. Those are really the main units that I think are very good currently, and that I expect are very susceptible to get nerfed in the future. A few other honorable mentions here that are pretty good in the current meta, but I don't think are good enough to necessarily cause them to be nerfed imminently, would be Orochi Samurai and Queen's Knights. Queen's Knights are mostly good just because they counter men at arms, which are very meta still, and Orochi Samurai are good in general, but you do have to use their one ability at the right time, so there is at least some skill component required to do well with them. So just to recap everything we went over in this video, we went over the three categories of units in Conqueror's Blade. The first category was the Evergreen Units, which are units that you can expect to be good in almost all metas and throughout many seasons. Four units in particular you want to focus on unlocking first would be the Imperial Pike Guards, Imperial Spear Guards, Winged Hussars, and some type of long pike unit like Fort Abrasios, Hellbrigger Sergeants, or the new Seasonal Phalanx unit. Some other evergreen units that are good primarily because they fulfill a particular niche are our unit blob killers like Falcon Eddie Gunners, Flamers, Zikalian Militia, and Shenji Grenadiers, as well as our special anti-cav of Modows and Camels. The second category was our questing units, for which you want to unlock one fast cav unit for your weekly bandit raids to maximize unit XP, and surf units with the resource gathering veterancy bonus to be able to efficiently gather resources in the open world. And lastly, it was our current meta units that are very good currently, but if you unlock them just know you're taking a little bit of a risk that they could be nerfed in the future and then you've sunk time into a unit that's not very good anymore. 
So these are generally the current seasonal units, as well as Minute Arms, Wu Wei Mansion Guards, Rattan Marksmen, and Yan Yu Duck Cavalry. So hopefully this was helpful for you. If it was, leave a comment letting me know what your favorite unit in Conqueror's Blade is. I'd be curious to hear what everyone says. And thanks so much for watching. I'll see you out on the battlefield.